episode eight of the ABCs of Sports Nutrition. This week's episode is Fueling Family Fun. Uh, like our past episodes, it is sponsored by Jackrabbit. If you use the code FUEL25, you can get 25% off your next order on their website. Um, I am so excited for this chat with this group of athletes because on this screen here, we have some world-class athletes who've also had to up their pro parenting game because of COVID. Um, I want to be very, you know, upfront that this pandemic has put a tremendous amount of stress more so on parents these days who are homeschooling and also trying to work from home and then also trying to, you know, still be an athlete and, and perform um, when and if they're able to. Some of you have all raced, some of you are at a race right now, so maybe we can touch on that too. Um, but I just want to, you know, acknowledge that COVID has, you know, made parenting more of an endurance sport than it ever has been ever before. I mean, it already was, but COVID has made it much tougher. Um, so, you know, it is our new normal for a little while. So I'm hoping that uh, we can share some tips and tricks, some successes, maybe some failures around activities and foods that you guys are using to help motivate your kids to get outdoors. I'm super excited to um, introduce our panel tonight. I don't even know where to start. Uh, so Rose, we're gonna start with you. So Rose Grant, she's a five-time mountain bike national champion. She's a four-time world championship team member. And in 2019, she won the Leadville 100 mountain bike race. She is the mom to Layla, who is seven years old and her husband is Nelson. So welcome Rose. Thank you. I'm going to go to Max King, who we weren't sure was going to make it. Max is actually, where are you right now, Max? I am in Chattanooga. Just got here a few minutes ago. And just quickly tell us, what are you doing there? Speaking of racing. Yeah, so it's actually race season now. And so I've got a race this weekend. Um, it's called Stump Jump 50K. Uh, it's a race that's kind of famous on the East Coast. Uh, not a lot of people on the West Coast know about it, but super famous out here. One of the biggest on the East Coast. Super cool 50K. Um, so that's going this weekend. I've been looking forward to it since 2012 because I actually DNF'd in this race in 2012 and haven't been back since. So really looking forward to it. Unfinished business. All right. So Max is the father to two children, Micah, who's 10, and Hazel, who's seven, and his wife is Dory. Max, if you didn't already know, is an ultra runner. Um, in 2014, he won the IAU 100 kilometer world championships in 2011. He was uh, the World Mountain Running Championship winner. And then in 2019, you won the Mount Marathon in Seward, Alaska, which for those of you who don't know, is basically straight up a mountain and then straight down a mountain. Um, so pretty incredible. Uh, Mike Wardian. I call Mike the Energizer Bunny of Ultra Endurance Events, which I think is a very good skill for uh, you know being uh, homeschooling and working with kids now. Um, just a few of Mike's accolades because I would run out of breath trying to name all of them. Um, he has the fastest marathon on a treadmill. At one time, Mike, you had the fastest marathon pushing a baby stroller. I didn't know this about you. True. Uh, <laughs> in, in 2017, he did seven marathons in seven days on seven continents. So obviously he knows how to shape shift in time travel too. Um, and then in, I think this was 2019, you won the Quarantine Backyard Ultra in a time of 63 hours. He did 63 laps and he ran a total of 262 miles. Actually, yeah, yeah that was actually this year in, two, in was, 2020. Yeah. Okay. So it was I'm already in, losing it, years. Yeah. So it was actually kind of at the beginning of uh, the quarantine. So yeah. yeah and it's cool because that win got me invited to do the world championships, which was in two weeks, actually. And it's also in Tennessee because Tennessee is like, whatever, we're, we're rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck in that. Thanks, uh, man. And our final athlete is actually the athlete I've known the longest in my tenure at GU, um, Emma Gerard. She has a son, Torin, who's seven, a son, Nigel, who's three, and her husband is Ian. She's uh, an ex-Terra national champion in, in 2015. From 2012 to 2015, she was the fastest American woman at ex-Terra World Championships, and she's done 10 ex-Terra World Championships in her career. 
She also works with the Nordic Ski Academy and she's currently putting on a trail running series to help run fundraise for her local ski club. Welcome, Emma, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's start with a success because I know parenting during COVID has been, has been difficult for folks. So in light of the pandemic, I'm wondering um, if you guys can share a, a tip, a trick when it comes to keeping your kids busy, entertained, active, because all of you guys are very busy, entertained, active people. What have you been doing to keep your kids busy and entertained during uh, shelter in place? So let's start with you, Max. Oh, man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> well, so funny. <laughs> um, <there's> hoping, <laughs> hoping, hoping I was going to be last. Um, I could get some more <laughs> advice from other parents first. I, well, I mean, one of the things like with this whole COVID thing is like, trying to keep them entertained and busy is one of the biggest challenges because so I'm at home, I'm trying to work, um, doing other stuff with, you know, everything that I do along with running and my wife's at home, she's working from home. And so the, the keeping the kids busy has probably been the biggest challenge that we've had. And, um, you know, part of it is like, my kids are super into crafts. Um, and so that's pretty easy to keep them involved in that. Um, especially when they don't have school. Right now, they're in school again um, from home. So we've been doing that. But um, crafts are a really good way to keep my kids busy. Um, they love doing different crafts. Um, I've tried to kind of, they branch out. We do a painting one day. We'll do some drawing one day. I've gotten into leather work because I've, you know, nothing else to do in COVID. So I actually started doing some leather stuff. So I got them doing that. And then the other thing is just send them outside. I mean, I want them, you know, it's summertime. I want them to be involved outside. So I, I try to just, just like shove them out the door whenever I can and keep them busy outside. But, um, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing is just like the biggest challenge, I guess, right now is keeping them busy and stuff. If I trolled your IG correctly, didn't you also do a bunch of baking with your kids, teaching them how to cook this year too? Yes. Well, my son, he's kind of into all of that sort of stuff. And so we were doing some challenges with a friend of mine. And so we were doing a bunch of baking stuff as well. Um, and my wife, she's definitely the bigger cook. And this was kind of more of like a challenge thing um, between me and a friend for the baking. And so I'll do my fair share of cooking and stuff. Um, but it was kind of fun to like throw these things out there that I'd never done before that we're going to, I knew we're going to be a really big challenge. So like we made croissants, which I don't know if you've ever made croissants, but that's really hard. And then the next challenge was homemade pasta. I've never made pasta before. So we made some homemade pasta from scratch and, you know, cutting it up and everything else and it turned out really good. Um, uh, but it was, yeah, it was a kind of a fun time to kind of like branch out and do something that's a challenge though you wouldn't normally have time to do. And that's what for me, like COVID and like quarantining and stuff have been all about is like doing these things that are totally outside my comfort zone that I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally do, um, but are really fun to kind of challenge myself and do something different. So Yeah, we'll talk about that silver lining that's come out of COVID and shelter in place for sure. Yeah. Rose, what about you? What's a success or a tip or a trick when it's come to, to you and Layla this? I think for me, having a schedule is really key. Um, can you hear me all right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I plan ahead based on my training schedule largely and then other tasks that we have to do. And pretty much every morning we do school. Um, and then in the summer, incorporate childcare. So I really work hard to find babysitters that have fun with her and get her outside and are creative and don't do TV. And then almost every afternoon we would head to the lake because our summer season is pretty short in Montana. So, and I really like sunshine. <laughs> so that was just like a perfect playground for her. And I got what I wanted. I could lay there and recover. And, um, well, and then you took up a new sport at the lake, right? Right. I mean, out of this, if I read your, yeah. Your, yeah. So tell us about the new sport that you and Layla mm -hmm. discovered. Well, it's barely a sport, but I mean, it is, I, I, I didn't really use it as a sport, but uh, I got a paddle board. So, um, yeah, Layla would paddle me around and I would just relax. Perfect. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And then I started to also, every time I had a recovery ride day, we would do our rides together. So I 
be motivating for me to get her out and ride with her. And that really worked out good too. Awesome. That's great. Another silver lining. You, yeah. Your daughter into your recovery ride days. Um, Mike, you're up next. Success cool. tip when it's come to keeping your kids entertained. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, so just so everyone knows, I have two boys. They're uh, Pierce is oh. 14 and Grant is, um, he's 12. So, um, you know, they're, they're kind of like at a interesting age where they're uh, a little bit bigger than, um, and so they can kind of do some of the stuff I dreamed about doing with them. Like when they were like in my arms and I was like, oh my God, it'd be so cool to like, <laughs> uh, go for a run with these guys. So we actually, um, at the beginning of quarantine, the kids in the neighborhood, we started doing a run club. So there at one point, I think we had like 25 kids that were meeting three days a week. Um, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then it just got, uh, I live in Arlington, Virginia, which is basically Washington DC. And in the summer, it just got so crazy hot and swampy that it, we, tabled the run club because instead of going like the two to three miles we were going like 800 meters and everybody was dying and like needed water and like it became this whole thing so uh what pierce and i have started to do is he's started to ride bikes with me and he's started to um use clip-in pedals which i didn't even yeah. know about until i was like in my mid-20s and it's so baller to see him because the first day i was like oh dude you're gonna fall and he took the biggest spill actually i've been meaning to tell you about this like the biggest <laughs> spill and i was like oh dude he's never getting back on that bike and i swear the next day he came he's like can we go for another ride and i was like what are you serious like okay sure but i thought that like, it was never happening again so like that's been pretty cool to like get my butt kicked by my 14 year old like I can't even keep up because I'm on like a fixie trying to like keep up with like a you know a, a nice like like specialized like yeah I can't like he's like destroying me and like looking over his shoulder waiting for me so that's been so cool to like go on some long bike rides and like get my butt kicked by my 14 year old and I'm like oh my god he's gonna be in the Tour de France like I have like these crazy aspirations <laughs> like uh but i was like this that's is, great this is like yeah this is like one of those things where it's like it, you know in in real life like if we weren't like in this shelter in place like you know he'd probably you know be out riding with his friends or something but you know there's an opportunity for me to to you know go out with him and i've taken advantage of that um also like uh the boys have it, it was funny because when max was saying that about the cooking i forgot our younger son decided he wanted to learn how to cook and so he's been like making eggs so he'll come up on the weekends and take like egg orders from people and like uh, <laughs> be like you want them sunny side or you know scrambled or whatever and I'm like holy crap like but then of course he forgets to like turn off the burner and like the you know the pan like gets <laughs> mangled but like you know there's 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 pluses and negatives baby but, steps you know yeah. eggs are pretty baby good yeah, yeah 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 so it, it's cool. been it's been pretty awesome yeah I want to circle back to the to you as the PE teacher for the neighborhood at some point because I have I have visions of the of the local kids being like, oh dude, it's your dad again teaching PE. Does he need to make his dad again? Um, but Emma, what about you? What have been some successes or tips or tricks you have with keeping your kids busy? Because I know I see them outside all the time in your pictures. <laughs> yeah, I've been agreeing with um, uh, Max, you know, it's just getting, getting them out the door because it's chaos inside. Um, but there's definitely been different stages of COVID. I have memories of like them jumping on a pullout couch as like our, our cheap trampoline. Um, we've been doing a ton of bike riding. We got our three-year-old off of training wheels, which I cannot take credit for. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, you know, way better than uh, being on um, training wheels. And uh, yeah, a, a thing lately that's been a success is, is having my three-year-old bike while I run and he, we're a pretty good, good match. Um, and, you know, we've mostly been keeping it in the neighborhood on the like local bike paths. There was a, you know, a period of time when we couldn't go to the playgrounds and that was super hard to explain to a three-year-old why he can't yeah. go on the playground. And I think he thought it was all me 
telling him he would get COVID if he got on the playground. So then he would tell me things like, if I, I don't know, things like if the dog barks, he's going to get COVID and, and stuff like that. So he started to use that to tell us things we, we, we couldn't do. Um, but when we were able to kind of move around a little bit, we, we went camping quite a bit. Um, and that was great to be kind of self-contained and just, you know, the kids are outside the whole time. We also did way more paddle boarding than what we have done um, previous years. Um, things like walking the RC car is, is something that we do around the neighborhood. Um, and then things in the backyard, slip and slide. Um, you know, we were doing like hopscotch and yeah. Um, you know, it's getting resourceful like, to keep them active. Yeah. Yeah. No, they want to be active. So it's good. But you know, you you are battling the desire to be on screens and things like that. So yeah, we can talk about that too, at some point, because I know Mike, in your answers, you had a, an interesting response about screen time. And then there's others who would prefer their kids to be outside and, and not with yeah, screen. Yeah. But let's, um, I want to talk about snack time. While, while I'm not a parent, I did spend 11 years in the classroom teaching first, second, and third grade. So I'm super familiar with hangry kids. I'm familiar with the importance of snack time, uh, lunch, all of that. You know, I'm also well aware that when, when, when kids have like stable glycogen levels, right, that they, they perform better. Activity actually helps them perform better too, cognitively and stuff like that. So um, this is gonna be another round robin, but uh, the importance of snacking and lunch times and, and finding like a, do you have your kids on like a, a regular feeding schedule now that they are at home more often? and you're able to control that. So uh, I'm gonna start with you, Rose. Feeding sure. schedule, yeah. Yeah, so my daughter, if if I didn't have her on a schedule, she wouldn't eat all day. And then there's lots of tears and just breakdowns and she doesn't recognize that she's hungry still um, until it's really too late. So I do have to initiate that she eats, it, you know, as best I can and, um, She's at school full time now, and there are days she'll come home and it's like you. She eats nothing out of her lunchbox the entire day, and doesn't really recognize that she needs food. Um, so having a schedule for eating is important for for us, and I think I know you know like firsthand that we all feel better. So that's usually my first go to when she's being mouthy or <laughs> kinda, <laughs> feed them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And you know, like she's really easy, like she's pretty picky, but I can always find things for her that she likes that are, have good nutrition value and, and that's important, but like, that's kind of a, um, personal important thing that, that I feed her well, um, yeah. she, that she eats good. So yeah. Yeah. All right, we're, we're going to circle back to snacks and stuff like that. Max, what about your kids? Do you have them on a regular feeding schedule? No, I'm too, way too like busy at home to like <laughs> worry about it. So yeah, I, it's somewhat regular. Like you know, around ten o'clock they start to get hungry and they're like, I want a <laughs> snack. My kids are just the opposite. They'd eat all day long if they could. And so <laughs> I'm like, No, you cannot have a snack yet. You need to wait. It's got to be ten o'clock. And so. Like at school, they're very regimented, right? I mean, they've got these like certain snack times and they've got lunch time and then they've got another snack time. And like for us, while well, we're at home, they're kind of running around the house. It's a little bit more chaos. And so they kind of just grab snacks whenever they want to. And I try to like limit that until about 10 o'clock. It's like, man, you just had breakfast. You don't need to be eating again. And so that's how it is in our house. And so it's like, it's not scheduled. It's not like, um, I wish it was a little more regimented. It'd be nice if we could get on a schedule, but me and my wife are just kind of like all over the place. The kids are like all over the place. And so it just doesn't happen. Um, yep. And so they, they eat whenever they kind of need to eat something. And then lunchtime is pretty regular. Like that's always right around like 12. Um, but, you know, for the most part, snacks are just kind of like whenever we get hungry. So, yeah. and part of the issue I think is like, they see me like eating all day long. Like I'm in the kitchen constantly like eating like 10 minutes after breakfast is over. I'm like grabbing a snack. So that's part of the, part of the problem is me, you know? So. Emma, what about you and your, your little Groms? 
we don't have a strict schedule, but there's there's a loose schedule there. Having weekdays, um, they're actually in school, so breakfast is at a more specific time, and lunch is obviously when they have lunch at school. And um, there's always a demand for snacks after school, and it's kind of there's this time that there's always kind of this mad rush to have dinner soon enough that they don't like overdo it um, with snacks. Um, the weekend is a little bit more lax, um, but I think the biggest thing is like planning ahead, um, not just with snacks, um, but with, you know, lunch sandwiches for lunch and, and kind of having, making sure you're feeding them at a time when there's not distraction. So you're not trying to have them eat sandwiches right before they're playing on a playground or something because they're, they're not going to eat it. Like, you know, oftentimes it can be in a car or something like that when, um, they're not seeing something that's more exciting to them than food because yeah. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of stuff is, um, but yeah, just pretty much always having snacks on us is great. Um, like making that peanut butter and jelly sandwich first thing in the morning. So you just have it and you can give it to them when they, they need it. Yeah. Mike, what about you? You had made it made an interesting comment in your responses about one of your sons, I forget if it was Pierce or not, about eating more fruit during shelter in place, right? Yeah. You, let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. So he he doesn't really like fruit or vegetables. And so we've been trying <laughs> to get him to to eat more of those and like actually I was super pumped tonight at dinner. I like just like weaseled some strawberries in front of him that were already all cut up and looked awesome. And he was like, okay, fine. And he started eating them. I was like, yes, take that. Yes. <laughs> so it was like, um, and then the other day before they got, I think I was making pancakes or something, but I was like, you guys need to eat a salad. And they're like, uh, okay. And so like, I'd made them a salad from the farm share that we get. And it was like, and I was like, what do you guys want dressing? Cause like my wife and I were talking about like, you know, what was that like vehicle dressing that you like first got into like salad with? And it, she was like, I don't know, ranch. And I was like, I think mine was blue cheese or something, you know, weird. And, and yeah, they're like, nah, we're good without dressing. And they totally just ate it. Like it was, it was so cool to see. And I just like, it, it was, it was like pretty generic. It was like greens and tomato and actually there was no tomato what am I I'm not I'm crazy uh, it was uh greens and carrots and um cucumber and and I was like but it was only like this big I put it in like like a miso soup bowl you know so it wasn't like overwhelming and they totally ate it so it was like another victory yeah um but I mean I think the other thing for us is like they're totally not on the schedule either and they are pretty self-sufficient so they can just like go in the cabinet and get cereal and they eat a ton of cereal um but like i've noticed i'll just like wake up on like a random tuesday morning and be like you guys want pancakes or eggs or something and i'll just make them breakfast and so that's been kind of nice too like without having to commute somewhere or whatever it's just be like yeah. i'm already home from my run and workout and i'm like you guys want something hot and they're like sure or like oatmeal or something and so that's been nice to kind of share that with them. And then of course, yeah. like two minutes later, they just go to their desk and they're at school, you know, so they don't have to commute either. Yeah. I want to pivot off of something you said back to, to you, Rose, because in your responses, hi, Layla. <laughs> <laughs> she in the picture? Uh, she's in the picture. She was, she's hiding yeah. now. I embarrassed her. Uh, yeah. um, it's, but I'm good at that. Being a former elementary school teacher, I know how to embarrass kids. But Rose, you, you talked about the importance of dinner, right? That you've, you've sort of had a new emphasis around dinner and the importance of a shared family meal. And I'm wondering if, 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 if other folks on, on this call have experienced that, particularly you know, with shelter in place and stuff like that, like sort of the reemergence of the, the importance of the shared meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. For you, Rose, I think it sounded like it was dinner time. I wonder if you could talk about just that aspect of your day. Yeah, I have always felt like having a meal with a family is important and just gives us an opportunity to connect with each other at the end of the busy day. Um, and it could be any meal really. Um, but yeah, and that has been that way always. And I think okay. I grew, I grew up kind of more traditional with so dinner yep. and, you know, like we're all busy during the day, a lot of the times and spread out, but 
you know, if in, it doesn't always work, you know, my husband works shift work and we're not always there, but at least Layla and I like will almost every night sit down and have, have dinner together and just yeah. few distractions and just use that time to talk and connect as well. Anybody else on this call have like a, a meal tradition where you try to have at least one a day where you sit down with everyone? Anyone? No? Yeah. We try to do most of the time. Uh, yeah. We yeah. try, we try. Yeah. 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 We're, we, we've always been kind of a traditional, like dinner is the time where we all sit down together. It's been better now that, you know, we're all home at the same time every night. Um, but in the past, we've always tried to do that as well. So, yeah. All right. Let's go to a quick speed round here. So, um, if you were taking your kids out, you know, to do something outdoors, uh, something active, what's the go-to snack in a pinch, an item? What, 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 what is your go-to snack that you always have, you know, like your dog treats sitting in your pocket or whatever? What's your kid go-to snack? Emma. My youngest does love um, Stroop Waffles. Um, he, yeah. He sponsored. He sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does my oldest have most of the time? I'm kind of on the spot here. Um, doesn't have to yeah. be related. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we always seem to have a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, uh, bananas, apples. Um, he does like, like chews. Um, that's a pretty kind good of, kind of a treat that I do bring on some rides rides is a little bit of a bribe is uh, kinder eggs because they have the little toy in them. Also, those are a big big hit if, if I'm struggling to get them out the door. What, can um, you explain that? I'm obviously, I don't know Kinder what eggs? eggs are. Yeah, I don't know what that is. They're like, they're what? chocolate. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> he doesn't have kids, man. Of course he doesn't know. Well, yeah, that is. I think they've Dude. only been in the US a couple of years. So they, I think they're German and um, <laughs> they used to be like in, in Germany, they're like a shell chocolate. But now in the US, it's like one side's like chocolate and then the other side's a little toy that they'll lose in like, 10 seconds, but it's, it's exciting. Yeah. But you can You'll try to keep out of your dog's mouth. Yeah. 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 My son did almost die choking on like a. Oh, no. Uh, well, no, actually, no, he didn't. But there was like one that came with like this little mini motorcycle that was like this big. Um, <laughs> hot cocoa is a big one in the wintertime, bringing yep. that um, on adventures. Summertime, obviously, it's like more riding to the ice cream store um but yeah all right yeah a little bit of some carrots there to get them you know that that get them out and active i mm -hmm. like mike what about you go-to snack for the boys uh go-to snack is pro probably granola bars i'd say that they eat a lot of granola bars and like fruit by the foot man they love that stuff like the like fruit stuff rolls? It, like rolls out is like a yeah. hundred Kind, yeah basically yeah but they don't have they, no one eats fruit roll-ups anymore I, that i know like those like but it's the same thing yeah basically i just uh, dated myself because my, we had fruit yeah fruit roll-ups when i was a kid <laughs> there's yeah, these totally. things we, called we yo-yos <laughs> that are my son like yo-yos yo no yeah they're kind of like a fruit the, by the foot thing <laughs> anyway there's a snacky food yeah, yeah, yeah back to you mike go ahead yeah yeah, there, there's tons, like, those things. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. And then uh, I usually bring, like, uh, nuts. They like like those little, like, 100-calorie packs of almonds. Um, that's actually something that I'm surprised that they like as much as they do. Uh, and really don't weigh that much. Um, so if you're going on an adventure. And then I was thinking, you were saying, like, you go to get, like, ice cream. Like, our youngest son likes freaking lobster rolls. So like every time we want to go out, like at the beach, he's like, yeah, let's go get lobster rolls. I'm like, dude, it's like Expensive 25, taste. 30 bucks every time. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're going to have to, you're going to have to cure him of that, Mike. What about you, Max? What about your kids? Go to um, well, I usually try to like do something that's going to be healthy for them. But a lot of times we're going to hit like, well, we bring a lot of nuts, uh, like peanuts, uh, almonds, things like that, but also like dried fruit. Like we'll do, 
um, like, you know, dried, um, dried oh, yeah, mangoes, good. dried cranberries, stuff like that. So stuff that's like portable and easy, you can grab from the house and just go with it. Um, and then, and it's good for them too. So, yeah. And you, Rose, Layla's favorite go-to snack? Well, I really like to bake. And so I usually have cookies or- I saw those pictures, yes. they look Energy weird. balls or yeah. something like that around. And so those are super easy to grab and take. And they have pretty healthy stuff in them. So that's what I usually grab and take. And then if the activity that we're doing is requires a lot of energy, then we do stroop waffles, the Gucci's. So, you know, those are bribery more than anything, but yeah. All right, let's continue this, this speed round here. Favorite guilty food pleasure for your kids that you rarely let them have? Maybe it was like what you were saying, those chocolate eggs, but like, is there one thing or the, the lobster rolls? Is there like one thing that you know that you could bribe them with and they'll do whatever you ask them? Max? Oh, they... dude, anything with sugar in it, man. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's like easy. <laughs> like, yeah. They don't get it a lot, but, and so it's always like, you know, soda is super easy because they never get soda. We Damn. do, we do yeah, candy dude. like fairly often, like, you know, a little piece of candy at night or whatever, but it, it's easy to bribe them with candy too. So anything with sugar really is, is what they're into. Yeah. Rose, I'm going to assume it's your awesome chocolate chip cookies, but does Layla have another like Achilles heel when it comes to sweets or something like that? I mean, you know, there's like a healthier variety of everything that's terrible for you. <laughs> so I usually have, you know, like the healthier varieties, you know, if it's, <laughs> if it's, it's not Cheetos, it's Annie's cheese puffs or, you know, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. So, but well, they're organic. I know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but yeah, she's, you know, we, we get the little Reese's, um, organic, you know, Reese's from Justin's. Yeah. 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 Things like that. So yeah. And she's All perfectly right. happy. She doesn't know the difference. Good. Yeah. Mike, besides lobster rolls, what, what, what is your favorite guilty food uh, pleasure for the kids? Oh, for the kids? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's only max crushed. I mean, yeah, it's basically yeah soda it works and it actually works really well for jet lag because they've been so many places so like if you just need to get them like to like go on the metro after they've been on a plane for 20 hours if you hit them with like a coke or something like it's <laughs> rock star it's just it's just like an ultra man you know at mile 80 you know you'll get to the last 20 miles you'll, you'll knock it out so uh, it's it's definitely that um Ice cream works pretty well. Um, I think Emma may have mentioned that. Like, um, and then I'd say, I'd say even like just little bags of cereal works really well. So like, but like not nice cereal, like Annie's, like crappy, like Lucky Charms and like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, the bad cereal yeah. that we all crave yeah, yeah, as yeah. kids, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, My, exactly. Yeah. My parents wouldn't give me, you know, sugar cereal <laughs> growing up. So like you just dump all the sugar on the Cheerios that they fed you. Um, Emma, right. what about you? What do your boys have like a favorite guilty food pleasure besides ice cream? I, I, popsicles. Yeah. yeah. Popsicles right. are That's big. Good. And yeah, I would agree. We, we don't, they don't have sugar cereals at home. So when we go on trips, it's like a big deal to have the Fruit Loops oh, yeah. in the, the continental breakfast. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's continue this real quickly. Uh, a food they just won't eat, no matter what you try to do, they just won't eat this one food, if, if there is one. I'll give you guys a quick second to ponder that. Is there one food that they just will not eat? For me, personally, I have a weird thing with textures, and I don't eat whole tomatoes. I never have, um, but I like salads, but I won't eat whole tomatoes. So I, I kind of have a, a quirky thing around textures. But what is that one food if you, if they do have one? Let's put you back on the spot, Emma. Is there? Yeah, I mean, my kids aren't the most adventurous eaters, but I'm having a hard time thinking of things they they won't eat. And I think every kid's so different that it's I'm you know um, 
you might have to circle back to me. Okay. Um, right. We could do that. Dude, I can answer this. Oh, okay, Mike, yeah. what do you got? No, no, go ahead, man. Hey, go ahead, Max, because I'm, sure. I'm, 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 I feel like we're like simpatico with this, so I'm yeah. sure yours is probably going to be the same. Oh, well, it's probably oh. similar, but like, um, so me or my wife cook. My wife does a lot of the cooking. These, my kids will eat a lot of different things, right? They'll, they're pretty adventurous, especially now. It used to be a lot harder. Um, but at the same time, there's just certain things they won't eat and it's going to be different yesterday than it is today. And it's different than it is going to be tomorrow. And it's like, it always changes. You, my wife will make a dish and they're like, Oh God, I know I don't want to eat that tomorrow. They're like, Oh, oh this is so good. And it's like, what'd you do? <laughs> Nothing. It's the exact same thing we had yesterday. And so you never know like what they're going to eat and what they're not going to eat. Sometimes I feel like it comes down to like consistency. Sometimes it comes down to like, if there's little green specks in it, but yet they'll eat the salad that's sitting right there by the side. It's all green. It's like, you'll eat the green there. Why don't you eat the green little specks in the soup? And it's like, <laughs> because it's parsley. Make, it's I know. Parsley. No. It's parsley. They freaking know, dude. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. They're kids. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we uh, struggle with, I guess. Like, yes, last, last night is a really good example. We had squash last night and, and we slice it and then we bake it with like butter on top. It, it was really good, tasted great. My daughter, she like scarfs it all down. My son, he like fights us tooth and nail, like not, like not wanting to eat it, not wanting to eat it. He foregoes ice cream later on that night to be, just to not eat two pieces of squash out of the six that he had on his plate and i'm like dude just eat the two pieces and he's like no I won't ice do cream it. yeah i know it's like you get ice cream later he's like no i won't do it and so we're fighting with him about this and it's just like two pieces of squash four of which he already ate and now he won't eat the other two and it's like you've eaten this squash before i don't know what the problem is so yeah. I don't know. You know, it's things like that. That's funny. Two pieces of squash too far, Max. Obviously. I, yeah, I know. I pushed him over that edge. Yeah. All right, Mike, what about the sand? Yeah, that was the line in the sand. What about your boys? Uh, spicy food, man. They do not like spicy, like no matter what. So like if, like, I, yeah, like I'm lucky I have like a taco shop around here that I work with, like called District Taco. And like, the tacos are like the most non-taco tacos. They're like chicken, as plain as can be, rice, cheese, and Pierce just added lettuce, but most of the time it's just taco. Like it's just meat and cheese. And so like, but if you try to add salsa, that's like, whoa, no way. Nope. So like yeah. <laughs> anything spicy, and even if it's like, and anything like rich, like uh like creamy or something and, and, le and besides like mac and cheese and they like that but like yeah. if it's like got a sauce on it it's not happening that's so, funny my yeah. niece and my niece and nephew are the same way with spicy food they have this real yeah. addiction to it um and the, and their parents love spicy thai food or whatever it is and my brother-in-law's a uh, a winemaker so they're always eating really good food but they won't do spicy food um, right but what it's weird but they will do like pad thai and dumplings hmm. and like they do and they're like super adventurous eaters like they eat hummus they eat like guacamole they eat like um you know anywhere we go in the world like they usually find something that but it, it's not like oh we all just have to order chicken nuggets or like burgers you know like so it's just they don't like the heat yet and I think it's something like you just get when you're older, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And finally you Rose, Layla, does she have something she just, yeah. Won't... Um, you know, I, I think that I kind of, yeah, like a lot of vegetables, she <laughs> doesn't like, you know, and I think a lot of that I take on as a bit of a challenge to like try to figure out how to prepare these things so that she does like them and enjoy them. Cause the last thing that I want is for her to be gagging on her food, you know, yeah. but to still eat well. So it's just kind of like, I don't, I, I always make her try whatever I've made, um, you know, but I don't want her gagging on her food either. So yeah, so a lot of vegetables, um, I have found like, I got an air fryer actually. And so that has been honestly like a saving grace for preparing vegetables because it almost makes them like 
crispy like a chip like broccoli like she she loves broccoli in the air fryer and different things like that so it's for me it's just more of a like a personal challenge or soup like I can put a lot of vegetables in soup and she she likes that so yeah I like that you have to get sneaky with how you uh, integrate the vegetables into their diet and like the air fryer is interesting right because it turns it into a fry right which they probably see as like this guilty pleasure good you know like yeah. that they're not supposed to have but now mom's turned this piece of broccoli into a fry so of course i'll eat that because yeah yeah i've never yeah. i've never had anything from an air fryer i've got to try that because it sounds there you go i mean it sounds good i mean you're you're frying it you're making it kind of crispy it's a different texture to it it'd be kind of good yeah, yeah i don't have very many kitchen like gadgets and that is one that i I'm, i love it honestly yeah. i use it every day but i use it for vegetables most of the time okay we do okay. a we use an instant pot a lot and just yeah. and because it's so easy we throw everything in there and just cook it and, and it's done in like an hour and makes a great meal so we use that thing a lot mm -hmm. similar so all idea. you parents out there yeah. listening <laughs> air fryers instant pot we've been using our rice pot a ton during you know, shelter in place too. Um, so I want to shift gears just a little bit, a little bit away from food and fueling and talk about um, you guys as pro athletes and uh, how much of your sport do you share with your kids and how much are they aware of what you do? do have they embraced like what you do or do they sort of shun your sport and do something else? Um, I just want to quickly go around and you know how much how much of what you do do you share with your kids so Emma let's start with you um yeah both my kids love biking that's probably their favorite um activity so that's a great thing to share with them they're not quite old enough to be running yet but obviously there's plenty of running that happens when they're at a playground or playing with friends and in, in the backyard um I, youngest is also I'm getting at are, are they aware that you guys are like pro athletes too do they understand that I know you know I have an awesome picture of you Emma I think when Torin was two and you ran across the Xterra finish line <laughs> him um, but I just I'm just curious how much you guys share of your athletic you know endeavors with them or how much they even care maybe they don't even care yeah the the youngest doesn't know for sure but the oldest the oldest has a little bit of awareness and um his dad tries to pretend I'm famous and things, <laughs> things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, no, the, I don't think he remembers too many of like the bigger races that he ran across the finish line with, but he's seen, seen the photos. Um, yeah. So and, yeah, and so obviously I don't, I don't, I, and then I don't think they're really aware that it was when it was a job, that it was a job like, yeah um whereas now I have another job so I think they're a little bit more aware of that but yeah um yeah when I remember just kind of like it was like mommy what do you do for a living and it was just like no you don't do that so <laughs> um yeah but uh we're at right now it's kind of the exposure phase so um skiing like I think my oldest is starting to like cross-country skiing trying not to push it too much but <laughs> um <laughs> def definitely like you know going to ski resorts and riding the chairlift so I guess yeah. that's the other sort of balancing act right that you guys have to do as parents is how much do you you know yep. put your sport on them too so Max mm -hmm. you what about oh, your kids? I, what, so, oh go ahead sorry I will add that I definitely played soccer as a um as a kid and I was definitely trying to get my son into soccer but he hasn't really taken to that he's still pretty young but it is one of those things this is just like oh I really want you to yeah. play a team sport and and it's definitely seem, seeming like the individual sports are gonna be more his thing which is yeah. great but uh um yeah I think there's oftentimes you kind of want them to do sports that you maybe didn't have the opportunity to do right and yeah um yeah cool so. Max your turn uh, yeah, cool. I'm glad you asked the question. I was hoping we kind of get there because I feel like for us, like a lot of this, a, lo a lot of that has changed within even the last two months, I guess, um, especially with my oldest. Uh, my daughter, we've always kind of seen her as more of the athlete. She's seven. So obviously, she's not an athlete just yet, but she seems more athletic. She seems like willing to take more chances and try other things. Whereas my son, um, hopefully he's not listening. I don't think he is. <laughs> he is traditionally, traditionally he has been I, I wouldn't say lazy, but I would say 
like very averse to trying anything challenging. And so like, it's always been trying to get him to try something to like hard is like impossible to get him to do something hard and challenging. So he's always been like, Oh yeah, I'll go for a walk. I'll go for a little bike ride, but I don't really want to push myself. Whereas I've always tried to like make sure that I introduce him to everything and make sure that he has a taste for everything at least. So um, about two years ago, we are like, okay, you're old enough. Like you need to do a, one sport a year and that's um, one organized sport a year. And that's all you need to do. But we wanted to kind of push him into something because he didn't want to do anything. So he, he did lacrosse, which if you've ever seen an eight-year-old play lacrosse, it's hilarious. It is like, it's hard. It would be really, really difficult for me to pick up now. It's just so like technically advanced um, hand-eye coordination and stuff. It's really, really hard. So he didn't really enjoy it all that much because he just didn't have like the coordination. I mean, he, he takes after me. So it was hilarious. <laughs> um, and so, so he did that. He was like, okay, that was terrible. I'm done with that. Um, so the next season he's like, oh, I want to try soccer. So then he did soccer a little bit better, but still like he was into it a little bit more, but still not totally into it. Well, and he would always kind of like sandbag practices and games and stuff. And it just like wasn't clicking. Right. And so it's been just within the last like month or two where I actually see this like sparkle of like, Hey, I, I kind of want to push myself a little bit more. And that has been really, really cool to see because so I, I run a Tuesday night um, interval group and he doesn't really run. He doesn't like doing anything hard, but yet, the past, I think, four weeks, he's come out to my Tuesday night interval group and run intervals with us. And I'm just like blown away. And, you know, as a dad, I'm like super proud that he's coming out and running with me. Um, and that's been really cool to see. Like he's actually like kind of he's pushing himself and he's running and doing something hard. And so, you know, like I think it's really just introducing kids to these sorts of things and then letting them take their own path. And that's been really, really neat to see that happen. And he may never do team sports, but he may get back into it at some point when he decides that he likes it. Um, but at least he's like trying these things and is introduced to them. And, and eventually, you know, they'll find something. So yeah. that's, it's been neat. That, that's a really, that's a really good piece of advice. Introduce them to a bunch of different sports and kind of see which one takes for them. Um, you're speaking to two former lacrosse players too. So I nice. appreciate that. Yeah. I played <laughs> yeah. in high school and college. So yeah, lacrosse is a great sport, but well, it it's is, like, yeah. yeah, we never had that ability to play. Cause I didn't even know lacrosse was until I went to college on the East coast. I mean, we never had it on the West coast, but now all of a sudden, like it's being introduced out there and it's, um, and it's pretty popular, especially in Bend. Like there's a lot of kids that play lacrosse. It's just really yeah. funny watching eight-year-olds do it because like <laughs> trying to get like, you know, baseball's hard enough catching yeah. it a ball yeah. in the mitt that's on your hand, but yeah. let alone like something that. that's on the end of a stick is like yeah. it's nearly impossible. So <laughs> balls on the ground the whole time is funny. Yeah. It's all yeah. about the ground. It's all about the ground game. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rose, what about Layla? Yeah, Layla seven. So this is definitely yep. just I've always thought of just introducing her to different things and she I when I look at her and watch her and observe her I think she naturally has like athleticism but also a competitive drive too and so I don't have to push her much we just make suggestions she's the kid who will watch an inspirational movie about whatever sport and then you know that's what she wants to do <laughs> you know so she um she loves to ski and we Nordic ski a lot. And I mean, uh, she wants to start skate skiing this winter. Um, we bike ride for sure. And she is fully aware what I do. She's traveled with me enough and watched enough of my races and hung out with, um, you know, the other women uh, yeah. and all of that, that she, she fully understands. And she is actually very proud as well. And if she was if someone was to ask her what I do, she would say, my mom races bikes. And so yeah. it is really cool. But at the same time, I don't want her to ever feel pressured that, that like in any way, that's what I want her to do. Like it is just like a season of exploration and give her the opportunities and let her find her way too. And I'll be there to cheer her on. That's really all I have to do is just like 
encourage her and cheer her on because she's the perfectionist and she gets angry at herself. And I just am the one who's like, Hey, you tried your best. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much more to everything than winning or whatever. So, yeah, no, it's an excellent, excellent point. Mm -hmm. Mike, what about you? Besides, oh, yeah, besides, ki I mean besides killing the neighborhood, you know, during PE class, making the, running the kids into the ground. What about your boys? No, yeah, man. I mean, our boys have been a part of my run since they were tiny. Like you said, like I set a world record with Pierce when he was like 10 months old. And I did this, a similar run with Grant when he was about the same age. And they've, I think, been to 28 countries uh, with me during uh, my running career. And, and I think they're completely um invested like pierce actually uh at the beginning of quarantine i just ran a marathon around our neighborhood just to like keep everyone entertained and uh he biked the entire time with me and there was like a bike gang of like 20 kids that were like riding around the neighborhood and he ended up riding as the furthest he's ever ridden but he was like handing me like shoes and like water like he would be like a mobile aid station for me because it was like totally like you know just a made-up race that I just made up myself so it wasn't like you couldn't take aid from somebody um so he's been like my mobile like aid station um they both helped during the quarantine backyard ultra during the 63 hours but they've you know crewed me at UTMB and uh in France and then New Zealand and um yeah, they're, they're heavily invested. And I always go in and talk to the kids school. And so like everybody in the school is like, follows what I do. So that's kind of cool too. So it's like part of their world. Uh, but I'm also like, I also coach their like flag football team. So like, and we were like, Grant's flag football team, we were terrible. We were like one and one and 13. That's okay. Um, that's yeah, okay. but it was like, so, so I think for them right now, like I'm, I'm the, the thing that they're most passionate about is esports. So it's like kind of different than everybody else's kids, like shoving them outside, but like we're super supportive of them. And like, you know, they have like fancy controllers that cost more than like my first like BMX bike, because like, it makes you like a split second faster. Um, and so when like, you say esports, you're talking about gaming, right? Just so people understand, right? Game yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So like esports, like gaming, like league of yeah. legends, like, uh, they play like a game Fortnite that a lot of people might know. Um, they, they play all those games and it's actually like the way that I find that the kids in our area actually stay in touch. So like, they'll like make times to like meet up and they have like, you know, big groups of kids that get together and it's like 10 kids all join the same game and, and then they play together. And so I think actually our high school has like one of the biggest esports teams in the country they have like 250 kids that are on the team or something wow. um and there's like scholarships and like pro teams and like it's 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 a whole thing like our last actual international trip was we went to the world championships of rainbow six siege in montreal and like it is like one of the most unique things being a pro athlete seeing these other pro athletes like so, have a line of like yeah, yeah yeah, but have a line like of like 150 kids and then they sold out the swag store in like 20 minutes. Like it was insane, man. And I was just like, this is, this is so next level, but like, you see like the, it's all over the world. So anyhow, yeah, it's, it's been fun to see them like kind of blossom in that. And they've like, they've won like prizes and awards and stuff. And so like supporting them in that has been, you know, kind of cool also. Well, I mean, it also makes sense, you know, for better or worse with uh, our, all, our new virtual reality, right? A lot of us, I mean, how many people on this screen have done a virtual event since COVID? Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah. I, I haven't done a Gamified, I did an Everstein. I know some people have done Game, but I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of events transition into the virtual realm. So this could be a really good skill for them to have. And who knows, maybe they'll go on and get signed and, and you know, get big gaming contracts or something like that we're getting close to time you guys i just want to you know circle around real quickly um because everybody's been facing adversity during during uh this new pandemic that um we're all dealing with what has been the biggest challenge for you during this um and maybe you know 
one really big positive too that has come out of this. So a challenge, but also something super positive. And we'll wrap it up with that real quickly. So let's start with you, Max. All right. Um, so big challenge. I, I mean, the biggest challenge is honestly like not having the kids go back to school. Um, you know, it's your, as a parent, you're trying to balance everything out and it's just during the summer, it was great because they were home. That was what they were supposed to be doing is being outside and we were taking trips and stuff. But now that they're in school, it's like, okay, now I have things to do. My wife works from home and we're also like, yeah, they're in school now. And we're trying to like homeschool and I'm the teacher basically, but you know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, it's, I'm not prepared for this. And so that's, I mean, that honestly is the biggest challenge to this yeah. whole thing right now. Um, yeah. I think the biggest positive though is the, and the flip side to that is that um, I don't have any races and it's, you know, I could, I could name that as my biggest challenge as well, but it really like has been kind of a blessing this summer is to be home more um, where I was home for all of July and August, all my summer running camps were canceled. All my races have been canceled. So I mean, what do we do? We spent more time as a family. Uh, we went out backpacking a couple of times this summer as a family. We went camping as a family, went up to the lakes as a family. We spent time at the river. Um, and so a lot of really good, like quality outdoor time, which I never get to do during the summer. And so that was like a huge blessing. And, and that was like the biggest positive that I saw that came out of this. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Emma, to you. Yeah, the, you know, the early pandemic, um, working and homeschooling and looking after a three-year-old just <laughs> wasn't possible to be able to do those three things. Yeah. And I was had full charge of, of, of doing that. Um, Ian was actually working outside of the home. So yeah, that was the hardest part. I mean, there's, you know, other things, there's been job loss in our family and just the, a big part of my job is, um, you know, planning and, um, planning for stuff you can't really <laughs> no one knows what's happening in in three yeah. three or four months um you know working for a nonprofit and fundraising is tough at this this right now um but I think the positive is yeah definitely I've spent more time time with my kids um in the last how long it's been eight months so. eight months yeah my um, you biggest challenge and then maybe a, a silver lining. Yeah, it, um, I'd say the biggest challenge is, um, is is just not being able to see our family like in a in a real way. Like you know, you're kind of separated or apart, and um, you know, your extended it's, family. You mean right? Like others in your family? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like my my mom, my dad. Like for the kids to be able to see their grandparents, to be able to go over to their house, to be able to hug them, to be yeah. able to just you know do normal kid things. Like it's weird when you're like, hey, do you have your mask before you go outside? Like just like going out the door um, can become like it's another hurdle right like and so like that's that's been a bit of um a challenge and, and I think also like just keeping them like so they feel safe and and calm like I feel like that's something like that maybe doesn't get talked a lot about but I, yeah. I sometimes feel like that maybe they have more anxiety than they are really letting on and and you know that it can be stressful for them um, yeah. and I think everyone's kind of feeling that um, but I'd say one of the biggest blessings is like, right before I got on this call, like my son and I knocked out like a project for his school, like, uh, where I was like hanging like a lightsaber from the wall that like, if you look at it one way, it's like all lined up. But then if you look at it another way, it's called like an anamorphic illusion or something. So it looks, it's, it's just awesome. And then I built like a Rube. Goldberg machine with our other son Pierce that like you know you <laughs> poured water in and then the no button went off and then it knocked blocks over that hit dominoes and like um so the chance to be around to like do all those things when you know I was supposed to be in Bhutan running in the mountains like yeah. you know that's um that's been nice I mean it's it's been cool to to see them grow and to be here for every aspect of that um, and so like, yeah, the, the, the time with your very close family, I think it's been great. Um, 
but you know, it is, it is something that, you know, I am missing our running community and, and yeah. also the endurance community in general. And so I'm excited to, you know, take part in some things coming up in the near future. Yeah. And finally you Rose, biggest challenge well, for lining. It's definitely like a counterbalance of being home kind of makes the other things a little bit more possible with uh, having the kids at home and things. Um, I, and I actually have a teaching degree, so um, I didn't know that. Homeschooling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I would say one of the hardest things is Layla is an only child. And so, especially at the beginning when, you know, we were more strict here in Montana, um, that was hard because she didn't have many playmates. We had a neighbor girl that she would play outside with. And that was, you know, kind of just an understanding that we had. And that was great, but that was probably the hardest thing. And then, yeah, like just a silver lining of, again, I think it's pretty across the board, just having more uh, quality time together. That's awesome. And, and, you know, taking advantage of, um, you know, a summer in Montana where I live, where I don't get to do a lot of the things or the type of riding that I got to do. Um, you know, I, I went bike packing. I did a lot of big alpine adventure riding. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And you actually just stood on the podium last weekend. You got to race at the apex. Yeah. In Colorado Springs, the stage yeah. race. Yeah. yeah you, got, you got third, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're a little bit over time. I, I really want to thank all four of you guys for, for giving up an hour of your day to share some personal information about yourselves, your kids, your families, your fueling strategies, some of your challenges. It's been a truly an honor to chat with all of you and, and have you share your stories and, and hopefully it resonates with our audience. Um, this is it for episode eight. Be sure to tune in next week for episode nine when they will be talking about recovery. Remember this episode was sponsored by Jackrabbit and use the code FUEL25. Thank you for watching the ABCs of Sports Nutrition. I wish everybody a great rest of their week. Goodbye. Thanks, Yuri. Bye, guys. Thanks, Yuri. Thank you.